Sounds good. Uh, so, Amelia, you're back over in uh, Norway, I understand it? Yep, back home. Or, uh, no, actually, sorry, uh, I'm in Denmark. So, oh, yeah, yeah. We're, uh, yeah, we're doing our exhibitions here and we're kind of uh, getting ready for the uh, tournament. And, uh, yeah, uh, we played, what, th- two games against Sweden and uh, one against Denmark so far. And uh, I'm kind of just jumping into it here. So, uh, we got another two games against them next week and then we're heading off. Right. And, um, you know, now that you've had, you know, a little bit of time to sort of reflect on, you know, the season that was here in, here in Calgary, um, you know, what is, what is your main impression on, you know, the experience that you had playing in those first 30 games, you know, overseas here and well, obviously you were in Denver before, but um, you know, with, with the Flames organization and professional. Oh, I loved it. Uh, great first year for me, I think, in a lot of different ways. I think it was a learning year, uh, a year that I'll really, you know, kind of try and soak everything in and uh, sort of, you know, take it as what it was. And uh, I think from an organizational standpoint, I thought, you know, all the players were given pretty much everything that we needed to be successful. And, uh, you know, it, I think just just a solid year in general. And nice to get a little taste of it right and you know <clears throat> we were talking to garrett sparks uh you know during the year and he said that um you know it, it's sometimes you know when you have a season like the one that you had it's good to sort of get a sense of you know what it feels both to win you know like you did in the eight game stretch early on but also to sort of go through that those struggles and, and obviously with the team playing the way it did down the stretch I, i'm sure there was a fair share of that and sort of what was the what was sort of the mood like uh, with the team sort of down that stretch and what did you learn from that um honestly the mood was pretty good um i think we accepted that we had a pretty young team um and that we were kind of it's a different year but uh, we we all wanted to do well and uh, i don't think it was you know we weren't getting blown out every game it was tight games and uh with the division being pretty tight and good teams in it you know the margin for error is pretty small so I think it's just like for a lot of our guys just trying to learn from our mistakes and just move on. And, um, you know, obviously we wanted to come, come a bit more together on the ice, but I thought we had a good group and, you know, we kind of get, we kind of kept our, uh, you know, heads up and just kept on plugging away. And now we're looking forward to next year. Yeah. And, you know, looking forward to next year, obviously um, coming back, back over, you know, for training camp and um, you know, obviously, you know, you'll be 21, might, you might, I mean, you'll, you'll be giving it all you got in training camp, obviously, you know, what, what are the different things that you are looking forward to in coming back next year, whether, you know, you, you, you're able to join the flames out of camp, or even if you go back down to Stockton, what are some of the things that you're really aiming to uh, improve upon in your game next year? Oh, uh, just all around. I think uh, with me, it's being comfortable at that level and uh, just kind of knowing, um, knowing what to do every game and kind of preparing for every game. Um, like I did in the end, I felt like I was getting a bit more grasp of how, how I need to play as a player and individually and how that feeds in the team game. And um, yeah, so for next year, I just want to, you know, come in with, come in with the ex- experience that I have from last year and, uh, you know, jumping into camp with some confidence and some jump to, to my game and sort of use the summer as uh, getting stronger all in all just just solid throughout and uh you know come into camp knowing some of the guys and knowing the staff and uh everything obviously a new coach is a little bit different but I think just coming in with you know a sense that you know what's coming and um yeah just being ready for it really showing up ready and have a good summer all right thank you I will go ahead to Paige Hi, Emilio. Um, so this season you were, you ended up playing every game but one, and then you were top five in scoring. Where did you find your own individual consistency? Um, you know, ups and downs, I think, um, you know, wasn't perfect, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't bad in any way, but it, I just thought that, you know, when I found my groove and I was playing well, obviously like our team was struggling to get on the score sheet, but I thought, you know, I took games for what they were, and uh, I felt like I was pretty involved in a lot of the games, playing pretty good minutes, and, um, you know, the coaches kept me accountable, and, um, you know, I 
felt like when I was playing well and uh, when I was doing the right things with the puck and creating chances, I was playing a lot. So that's what I want. And that's, I want the biggest role I can get. And I was pretty, pretty happy with that throughout the year. And, you know, that's kind of what I was looking at every game as just trying to progress and uh, do the little things right. And I know, I know I'll, I'll only get better from it. So uh, pretty happy with the year and uh, just ready to come back next year with a pretty positive mentality. Of course. And then as the season was kind of going on, did you find yourself leaning on certain teammates with it being your first season and everything? Were there certain guys you found yourself kind of gravitating towards? Yeah, we had, we had some really good guys in our group, uh, you know, obviously with a shortened season and stuff like that, it's tough to get to know guys at the, at the level you would normally get in a normal year, but and especially with, you know, you can't really do much outside the rink and kind of have to stay in our own bubble. But I think uh, especially at the end of the year, like you guys were keeping each other accountable. You could be honest with guys and uh, without really barking at each other. And, you know, uh, that's what you want in a team. Good teams are, um, you know, find a way to be have that honesty and uh, keep each other accountable at real game. And um, I think once we were doing that, I thought we were coming a bit more together. So uh you know it's it's feeling out and we had a lot of new guys and uh a lot of first year pros so uh I thought uh all in all it's pretty good and if you guys are able to play a normal season next year kind of all the games all that what would you like to see this team do um yeah it's just taking that next step I feel like for us um you know the younger guys it's uh, getting better, um, working on things in the summer, just really just sponge up this year and come into the year knowing that the mistakes you made last year and the things that you did right are going to be the things that you're going to, you know, have success with. And um, yeah, it's just, you know, playing a team game, doing all the little things right and bringing in the next year, really. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Go ahead, Darren. I don't think um, people have a full appreciation of um, you kind of how different this season was for players, especially as a, a first year pro where usually there's so much, you know, the team building going up for lunch. Like you, 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 I mean, you've grown up around hockey, all those things that just, and what that would have looked like as a first year pro. Can you just kind of take us behind the scenes a little bit and just you could kind of how different it was and um, you know, kind of what, just the kind of thing you'd be looking forward to getting back to when kind of we see that normalcy again? Yeah, I mean, it's not only like not being able to be with the guys on a regular basis outside the rink, but it's not seeing, um, you know, and this is for everyone playing this year, uh, not seeing family, not seeing uh, girlfriends, wives, kids, like it's not, you know, it's not an easy thing to do for, for guys that are pretty, you know, they're loving guys and they want to be with the, the people they care about. So uh, I just think, um, you know, there's a lot of things that go, in, <clears throat> go into that. And um, obviously, uh, you know, <laughs> a lot of us were making big sacrifices to be where we were and we were pretty fortunate to, you know, get to play and, um, you know, we just wanted to make the best of it. So, but other than that, like, guys love being at the rink and um you know I think uh would rather be here than anywhere else to just you know play play hockey is what we want to do and uh all, all in all like you're trying to just make the best of it really yeah what's uh what, so what's what's uh happening in, in Norway what's the state of the pandemic there right now um it's pretty similar to to Canada um yeah. you know the vaccines aren't rolling out pretty uh, aren't really rolling out at a rapid rate I, not that I know all about everything but it's not like the U.S. where you know they pretty much have have everyone going but uh it's pretty it's pretty slow and I guess uh we'll just take it one one day at a time and hopefully we'll get better soon yeah looking forward to the world to the world yeah uh both our na our nation needs it right now I think uh, some of our players need it a lot of our players uh um haven't played in a while with the with the Norwegian league being shut down since February. So um, 
it, I just think uh, it'll be good for guys. I think guys are really pumped up and motivated to play and uh, guys just want to get on the ice right now. What's your familiarity level with um, that team? Uh, most of the guys, all the guys you've crossed paths with or, or, or how could you just kind of characterize that a little bit? Yeah, in some ways um, they're a bit, you know, I've played um, U18 and under 20 with basically my best friends my whole life. And now it's a bit older guys that have played and have been uh, around the, you know, top division for a while. And they know sort of how it is to play against the top nations and, and um, you know, just trying to learn from them. And, but I'm pretty familiar with most of the guys, uh, at least, uh, you know, we have a pretty young group this year. So I know a bunch of those guys and, uh, but yeah, great group here. And we're, like I said, we're excited to go. I know that world championship sometimes um, gets lost upon North America because it's going head to head with the Stanley cup playoffs. And, but, but it is um, for, for anyone that's from Europe, who's familiar with it. It's, it's a real party, isn't it? It's like a big celebration. Yeah. I, like that's what I did growing up was watch these games and, uh, it's sort of after the year in Europe and, uh, you know, it's a big deal for our country and like a lot of guys, a lot of people watch it on TV and come even come play in a, or come watch in a normal year. So, uh, like my grandparents would go watch, uh, wherever, like if it, if the world's was played in Sweden or, uh, whatever they would go watch with their friends and sort of cheer for team Norway. So it's, you know, it's a culture here and, a lot of people like hockey, as, although it's not that big and we don't have that many players. But I think we have a pretty proud hockey group and culture for it. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're excited. Did you have a chance to go as a, as a fan, as, as a kid? I've never. Uh, I've never. Uh, I've always wanted to go. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, no, I don't think I don't think ever. Um, I think I was always pretty busy with hockey at this time of year. And um, if it was training or practicing or whatever. So, yeah. Well, there's always some, there's always, um, not always, but a lot of times there's kind of those, those kind of Cinderella stories that, uh, that uh, come through. So, Hey, this is your opportunity, man. I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Yeah, I'm fired up. So we're, like I said, we got a lot of guys that are, pretty pumped up to play and haven't played since February. So I see so playing for them and you're playing for your own country. It's great. All right. Well, good luck and look forward to seeing you back here in September or so. Thanks, Darren. Go back to Mike. Yeah. Just sort of expanding on that point a little bit. Like obviously there's all the stories about you, you know, being on YouTube and those highlights, you know, when you were like six or seven years old or whatever. Um, but, you know, it, just sort of like what Darren was talking about with, um, you know, watching the worlds and looking at team Norway and all that. And obviously I think there was like pictures of you wearing a flames Jersey like 10 years ago, but, but like who, who, who were like, wh how, you know, obviously in Canada, we, we look at guys like Sidney Crosby and guys like that, but how big is a guy like Matt Zuccarello in Norway? Uh, as big as it gets. Uh, I mean, everyone pretty much look up to him as a young player and, uh, even in just sports in general in Norway, everyone knows him. Everyone knows his name, uh, knows how he's doing right now. And, um, you know, like he's a big role model for a lot of kids. And uh, I think whenever you get a guy like that, that are doing well with, in the really big leagues in the world, whatever sport it is, you're always going to have people looking up, looking up to you. And he's definitely one of those guys. And even for me, like it's, it's a pretty, it just shows that there's no real path to anything. It's just, you know, it's, it's up to yourself and you want to, if you want to make it to the NHL, you can, and he's pretty much proved that. And what does that like, what does that mean for you? You know, looking at a guy like that and obviously Norway, you know, it must be, you know, whenever you have a guy like that making the league, cause I, I'm looking right now, there's only been eight players from, from Norway who've made the NHL and, so like, obviously knowing that, you know, anytime somebody from that country makes it, you know, the country's going to be watching. What does that sort of say to you, you know, knowing that maybe, you know, in a year or two, you might be in that position and, and how, how, how do you sort of keep that in perspective and, and, and sort of stay, you know, on a level, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't really feel any pressure at all. Um, Cause it's, you know, I'm, 
tech, technically when you look at it, like we're not really supposed to make it uh, that far. And I just feel like it's, you know, um, it's up to myself at this point. And I feel like I've had a good start to my pro career and I just want to keep building on it. Um, and all I can do is just look at, you know, how I'm doing each game and how I'm, how can I progress to get better? Um, I feel like I'm a pretty honest guy and that I can pretty like stay honest to myself. And I just want to keep doing that and make sure I'm getting better each day. I'm practicing or playing a game.